RPGs are a diverse genre on Roblox, with actual role-playing games, and some like this where you live a fantasy tale, grinding levels to get stronger. What are the origins for these types of games? Well, let's look into the entire history of RPG games. Our journey starts off in 2007, with a user called Silent Swords, releasing one of the first RPGs called The Secrets of Ancient Robloxia RPG sometime around October 15th, looking via the Wayback Machine and how many players joined the game in that time, to give a rough date as to when it was released. With it being one of the first RPGs, it had a lot of features. Now for the most part, all the scripts in this game are broken, but through looking through the code I can gather a rough guess on how the game would actually work. When you wake up from your bed, a book is on the floor talking to you, and then your mum calls your name, saying you have found a book that needs you to go on an adventure, and she'll meet you outside next to a big tree, giving the player a code to open the front door. After that the mum guides us to a tutorial area showing mechanics in the game that doesn't work anymore like spells which you start with 3, cage, ice shard and sparks with a number in brackets probably to indicate how much mana they will use. When looking around the map you can also find NPCs that would have been interactable like the book giving you codes to access teleporters and fight bosses which have levels. Though I don't really know how the level system works in this game, but it is for sure a starting point for other RPGs to follow. Another notable RPG from 2007 was Battle of Elements by Butlad, releasing sometime around December the 14th from a timestamp taken on archive.org and the visit count shown on the page as well. When you spawn into the game, you had three options you can choose from, Light Blast, Admin Blast and Doom Blast, which all fire like a projectile out of a gun. Once choosing this, you also have an option of four sub-elements, the usual fire, ice, darkness and lightness, all that sort of stuff. Once choosing this, you'll get teleports like a star in town. Various vendors around a few areas that give you items in exchange for gold, which is the currency in this game. You get gold by killing enemies you encounter. These areas are separated with teleporters, that being a normal area, a fire and an ice area, with one vendor in the ice area giving you free gold because they're cold. Just like the previous RPG mentioned, this game got updated 3 years later, to still an RPG game but more like a testing ground, with most of the old features scrapped with it having one big star, one area just full of enemies, but a cool little feature I found is that the fact that enemies now show how much damage they take and how much they give to you above their heads with squares. Other than that, there is not much to this game, but then again it is 2007 and games were still developing. In 2008, RPGs started to gain some traction with a few more examples with the most notable being the Tales of Ranger's Cape RPG by Yorius who you may have seen before as he now creates user generated content on the platform. Before going into this game, it's good to know that it has been updated throughout the years and it is still getting updated to keep it somewhat functional. One of the main changes it's had is the user interface which will get talked on shortly. Spawning into the game you are greeted by a small area with armor stands unlocked by grinding levels that applies more health to your character and warp speed. Some of these don't actually work anymore as they're anchored meaning when you equip that cape it will just glue you into place which applies to most of the capes over level 35. The game also features quests which were added around 2011 to 2012 with a few quests around the map, some of which are broken but most still work with the quest asking the player to retrieve an item in exchange for gold that can be used to buy better gear for their character. The map itself is open, with only a few areas blocked off via a door requiring the player to be above a certain level. Compared to the last game, this had more areas to explore, with a few more bosses to defeat, with some flying enemies as well. Not to mention some hidden secrets, like one in the ice area behind a movable door. 
Other than that, this game is big, with more mobs and bosses, some in separate areas and accessed via portals you see in spawn, but I actually recommend a level you should fight it at, rather than blocking it off to people over said level. One thing I was surprised to see working was the staff. Though it dealt damage, it only fired in one direction, but if the ball hits an object, it bounces it off, so if you pray hard enough, maybe it will hit the target you are aiming for. Overall, for 2008, plus extra years of development, this is a good RPG that has a lot of fun to be had. Another notable RPG from 2008 was a test demo by X Lego X, or well Stravant, who used to moderate the Roblox forums and has made countless plugins that are very useful for developers. Like most things so far, this RPG is broken. When you spawn in, you get a tool that would have worked for everything with equipping your armor and swords, but it just does nothing. Same with the shop on the map, which I do find it cool, you walk through a door to a part that looks like you're just inside the house. There are also some goblins on the map that just huddle into one area and don't really damage the player, which I'm guessing they would have done years ago. This game is just a test demo on how RPGs would have worked having one enemy type, a shop and even a PP area with stronger goblins. It's also a good thing to note, this game was under a different game that kept getting changed often but now it got moved to its own separate game and uncopylocked so people could access the code and see how it worked. 2009 was a similar case of it slowly growing with RPGs such as Elemental RPG, Tale of the Gems and Legends Adventure, but in 2010 everything changed. RPGs exploded in popularity with so many choices to choose from, with the most notable RPG from this period being The Lost Souls RPG, with it gathering 670,000 visits which compared to some it is quite low, but more will be revealed as to why later on in the video. This RPG is simple, just killing enemies for gold and XP to level up to the next area and killing bosses for new weapons as well. One thing I do like about this game is that you can trade your gold to obtain for XP, which is great for gaining more levels from unused gold. The game also had a wide selection of areas you can access at various levels, a PvP area for players to duel and bosses on their own separate island with more portals for each boss in the game. Other than that, it had a lot of swords and armors for the players to wear with two new armor sets in every area and each boss dropping their own unique weapon. Overall, it's a simple RPG that doesn't do much but it is done well with it not trying to overcomplicate the experience. The game has received updates throughout the years to make it work in modern Roblox and added a nice quality of life updates like auto saving when you leave the game, a nice UI that still feels classic and an overall fix is to make sure every part of the game functions as intended. Another noble RPG from 2010 was The Legend of Calzerb Sword by Dr. Chowder, gathering 3 million visits over its lifespan and received constant updates with the newest version of the game, way different to how the original looked. The original version of this game used the Roblox Terrain tool that got updated a few years ago, so most of the games that use the old version of the tool are now broken as the terrain does not load. This game is pretty simple, with shops scattered around the map in different areas to buy new weapons to defeat harder foes. After a certain level, you can obtain a cape that gives you more health like the Tales of Rangers cape by Yorius. This version is very nostalgic in terms of its overall look and design, opting to use models names as its description for the health, level and the name of the boss or enemy you're fighting, which you might have seen so far in the other RPGs in this video. If you are interested, there are two different versions of this game, one being the full modern version on the main game, or a paid accessed second game but still in development that is true to the original before it got changed into something different. This version offers more modern features and a nice sleek UI for the enemies and your items. Some honourable mentions from this year are The Locks of Destiny by OnePy23 that is now broken as you can't gain any gold or XP from enemies in the game. 
Though I do like how the map is gridded as it reminds me of the Binding of Isaac and how that one works. Another honourable mention is Legacy 2 RPG by Voralis. Currently this RPG is closed, but before it was a massive RPG that offered crafting, mining and killing of enemies to get stronger and more gold that can be traded with NPCs to get weapons or to craft items to help you progress in the game. In 2011, the genre just kept growing in size, with everyone wanting to jump on board and create their own spin on an RPG, with the legendary sword RPG being the most popular RPG so far, with it gathering 13 million visits over its lifespan. This game is like The Lost Souls, with it being very simple, just kill enemies to gain levels and oh, wait this time it has an attribute tab, which essentially makes you even more overpowered. I think you can guess what each stat will do if given some points into them. This mechanic has become quite the mainstay for old RPGs, with a few opting to use this system as well. One thing I do like about this game is that the bosses are not guaranteed to drop their dedicated item. Instead it's more like a chance it will to happen for each boss in the game, giving you some extra grinding to do to get their weapon, which if you get it early it can be really helpful to your game. If not, then well at least you can use it to fund your next better sword. Another idea I really like in this RPG is the fact some bosses are on like a timer but randomly spawn in as like an event around the map for people to kill but also drop their own custom sword, which I find to be a cool feature until you're unlucky in getting the sword for the first try. This last feature adds a whole new loop to this game, rebirths. When you reach level 300, you can rebirth, which you gain a cosmetic armor set and buffed XP and gold rates, as well as an exclusive area for reaching over that certain rebirth level. This feature hasn't been seen in any of the RPGs yet, but in some newer RPGs, this ends up being a main feature for grinding levels. Remember when I said the Lost Souls RPG was one of the most popular RPGs of 2010? This is Block's Law, made two years later, gathering 5 million visits. When you load into the game, wait, hold on, this is looking familiar, very familiar. This game was a ripoff of the original version by Darkness with a bunch of 9s at the end, with probably an older version of the UI and the boss islands also being broken due to it using the old Roblox terrain, which unlike Darkness's version, that one still works as the developer came back and patched all the bugs and issues to make sure it ran smoothly in Roblox. The next RPG is Lost Souls, made in 2011. Okay, this has a similar name to the one made by Darkness. Loading into the... Wait, it's just the same game again, but this time it has an even more basic UI and no bosses. Though this does add a new area called Floating Islands, which both the previous copy and the original didn't have. There was also a sword animation change that is different to the other two, but it seems to be broken as the first swing does give the enemy damage, but the rest don't, and even if you kill the enemy, they don't reward you with XP or gold. Now onto the honourable mentions from this period, with the first being the Forsaken Sword Legacies, which didn't reach the same height as some RPGs so far, but it has built a cult following with the three games in the series. Each of the games featured loads of lore based on the characters that appear in each installment and a villain named Dracus who stabbed the king in the first game causing you to seek him out and extract revenge. One thing this game does super well is the fact you can choose a specific class that has buffs like health regen or faster swinging that helps out in the long run no matter what you pick. The last notable mention is Legends of Nora RPG which this game was created in 2008, but later got changed multiple times until what it is now. This has a few areas, some separated by portals, different shops around the map, and some quests that are now broken due to Lua being updated over the years. In 2012, an RPG would come out that would be my entry point into the genre. That game was The Legend of the Fallen Kingdom 1, gathering 6.8 million visits over its lifespan. This game had so much to do, with three different weapon types that being swords, staff and bows, with each weapon having an ample supply of choices in what you can get, with the sword being my favourite out of the three, 
as now the bow and the staff are fairly broken. This game had so many areas to explore, with different enemy types that drop their own weapons if it's a boss, or it can be bought from a store, scattered in various areas across the game. One of my favourite features about this RPG is the secrets, with there being everywhere on the map, with one in spawn next to the music changer that teleports you into like a space base, but is a complete eyesore with odd colours and this weird texture and some of the blocks being like this wire mesh that matches the colour on the floor and then there's another secret that teleports you into like this turkey dimension by waiting for the clock to strike a certain time so then the door opens and let you teleport via the table in the middle of the room. Other than that there is a ton of armour sets with capes as well as the full blown armour set that sadly doesn't stack when you add a cape onto it but you can kind of do it with one armor stand that adds walk speed that sometimes stacks with the cape so you have full health and a bit extra speed but it doesn't work all the time. Another RPG from this period that gathered a cult following is The Legend of Excalibur by Darkness and a bunch of nines but it was uploaded onto their alternate account. This game is meant to be a sequel to the Lost Souls RPG with it featuring similar enemies but in a whole new area, with more use of the portals for every new area and bosses, with them still dropping a dedicated loot pool. A cool feature I like about the bosses in this game is that they now have their own dialogue, showing a conversation between you and the boss unlike the previous instalment that just thrown you straight into the battle. Another cool feature I really like is the spells that fire off like a projectile. Once it hits an enemy it will deal damage, meaning you can attack enemies from afar with different spells that do different ranges of damage, or inflict damage over time on enemies, or just be stronger against certain enemy types. In the same area as the spell stand, you can also find potions that are like buffs that can stack onto your character so you can deal more damage to your foes, run faster or use a health potion if you're in need of regaining back some health points you lost. Lastly, this game added a raid arena which lets you get everyone into a gladiator arena to summon a boss that will be on level with the person who summoned it which they have to use a token that can be found around the map. Once the raid boss has been killed, it will grant the server a boost so they can gain more gold or XP for 10 minutes. Overall, this RPG is a lot more slower than The Lost Souls, but it does feel more grand in terms of its features and how much the creator put into it to make it feel like a worthy sequel to the original game. For the years coming, I'm mainly going to talk about the main RPG from that year, as there's so many noble titles, but these ones stand out to me in the genre. In 2013, another RPG would come out that got me hooked onto the genre, The Legends of the Lucky Irish. This game was super simple, kill enemies and get stronger, so then you can get better armour and weapons to progress farther in the game. What made this game interesting was the use of secrets that were scattered around different areas in the game and overall the sheer amount of weapons and armour you can obtain as well as new realms to explore. One thing I did notice when playing this game is that most of it used an RPG called the Elm Scrolls but over time it's been changed and altered with more stuff getting added on top to make it a different RPG to the original place. The developer also mentioned that the original game for a bit of time was open sourced, which they used to make their RPG and later expanded upon heavily than the original material. Currently this game is outdated, with the save system being broken, but the developer has made a faithful remaster of this game called Legend of Zominus, with changed up areas to make it look better, armour and weapons all dropping from bosses and overall polished to make it a worthy remaster to the original game. The next year a notable figure in the RPG genre would release their first game called Sword Burst Online which would later become a three part series full of details showcasing what can be possible in the Roblox engine as well as World Zero, which is a totally different game that has a feel of being an indie game but it's made in the Roblox engine. However, the original game is pretty good, though it is heavily outdated. The game itself is grand, with worlds for each level in the game with different enemies ranging from animals to creatures. 
that drop materials that can be used to craft new weapons or armors that could be stronger than your current gear. But what you do notice quite quick is when loading into these worlds it does take quite a bit of time due to the amount of objects in each world, but then again it is used to bring the game to life with all this detail. Overall this game is great, offering a few different playstyles with you being able to do wield weapons or go more defensive with a shield. The main thing though is that it's better to adventure with friends than alone as everyone who attacks an enemy gets the drops from it, making it beneficial to roam in a party. In 2015 another RPG would come out that tried something new and that was Guest Quest Online. Loading into this game you will notice that it uses a top down view to fight your opponents with in a similar style of Diablo 2. This game had a kind of a dungeon crawler aspect to it as you enter a main area that has noobs that give you random loot like weapons, armour or hats that add to your defence. Only things that kind of annoy me about this game is that the UI is kind of big. But then again, it is 2015 and games were still developing in this time and it is just a small nitpick as well. Another nitpick I had is with the enemies in the game, as the enemies only show a health bar, which then could be add on to like show the amount of health maybe, so then you know how much damage you've done. Which I also think that would be a good detail as well to add, as in like a little counter that shows how much damage the enemy is doing to your character, as other than that it doesn't really give any much visual representation other than seeing your health bar slowly decline down. Overall this is still a fun RPG, with it trying something new and different that did change up the genre from the same design we've seen so far. If you want to play this game, it is currently closed as the developer behind it went on to create even bigger projects that drove him to fame and fortune, leaving his old projects to die in the dust. But this game can still be played via a restoration to make it fully functional in modern day Roblox. Over the coming years, the genre can be split up into four subgenres, with the first being the traditional RPG style we've seen so far, like Shadowviz and Shadowvia as an example. Starting with Shadowviz, releasing in 2022, this is probably the most traditional RPG out of the two, with a large open map that can be explored at any level, which is encouraged as you can find qubits that give you XP for finding them so you can level up faster, to then rebirth, which in this RPG after you reach level 100 you can rebirth, and then you need to reach level 1000 to rebirth and so on, but each time you rebirth you unlock a new area to explore. What this game does well is the weapon choices, with there being mainly three types with physical damage, that being swords, claws or fists, to then ranged weapons being bows and guns and throwables, and lastly magic based items. But this doesn't mean every weapon you pick up will be useless at your current level, as they all have different stats and some have a bonus stat that can change, which means you can grind more to gain a higher bonus stat than the last one you obtained. This system is great as it means gear you got early on in the game can still be used on your current build to make it as strong as possible. My current build in the game is a range class, with it using a fast bow and a cape that adds one extra arrow per shot and a trinket thing that does 50% extra damage each shot that it lands, which stacks up heavily making it a force to be reckoned with. Shadowviz stays true to the genre's roots, as it adds its own twists with weapon grinding having special bonuses that can improve the amount of damage you do compared to your current build. Now onto the sequel, Shadow Via, releasing in 2023. This game is similar to Shadow Viz, but it did a few things differently, let me explain. Shadow Via still feels like a traditional RPG, with some alterations, like for instance one of the biggest changes is how the enemies spawn, with select areas on the map having a random cycle of enemy outposts to choose from, and a selection of enemies that will spawn in those areas, like for instance in the desert, some have different bosses inside. After killing every opponent, you'll get a chest that will drop some materials for crafting or weapon drops from the foes you've killed. One change to the weapons is that you can now craft some certain items in the game with materials you get from killing enemy outposts on the map, 
as well as upgrade your existing gear so it's stronger, or just merge two items together to make a whole new item from a selection in the range of both items you put into it. Another change from the first game is that there are quests from different NPCs from around the massive map that is way bigger than Shadow Viz's map. These quests can consist of anything from killing enemies for a reward or straight up fishing for loot. Yep, fishing. It's a nice break from killing people at least, and all the stuff you can fish you can also sell for gold, so it's kind of a win-win either way. Speaking of the massive map size, some areas are separated from the main island, but you can now travel via a boat to reach these new areas, with some recommending a level you should be at before going to it, as it will probably kill you if you're not too careful. Overall, Shadow Veer is a massive upgrade to the first game, with a ton more features that the first game lacked, as well as no rebirthing, so people won't have these ridiculous level caps. Both Shadow Viz and Shadow Via keep the traditional RPG format alive, with both doing it in their own unique way. Then on the other end, you have Dungeon Crawlers, with the most notable example being Dungeon Quest, that kicked off the whole game's style. Dungeon Quest released on the 25th of September 2018, with it gathering 1.9 billion visits, with it getting 4,300 concurrent players. This game popularised the Dungeon Crawler game loop, with it offering a vast selection of dungeons for you to explore a wide range of loot varying from different tiers of rarity. One thing I do like about this game is the fact like Shadow Veer you can upgrade your gear to make it stronger so even if you have low level items, they can still be useful if you have some gold to invest into them. Loading into a dungeon, you face waves of different enemies based on the theme of the dungeon, with it getting harder as you progress until you face your first boss, that has different attacks based on the character it is, and then a second boss to finish up the dungeon that is way stronger than the first one you encountered. For completing one dungeon, you get one item from a random rarity, could be rare or epic or even higher, with it could be either a weapon, a piece of armour or even a spell, which have two slots for spells, which is Q and E, with a wide selection of spells that do different things, like a standard fireball, a spin attack with your weapon, or like a stun grenade, and the list is growing based on what items you can find. And keeping with the tradition, this game also has a attribute section to invest points you gain from leveling up to make your character as strong as possible so you can wipe out enemies with ease. Overall, this game was a smash hit, with it creating its own style in the genre, with more games following in its path to capture the same success as what this game had. Another style that is still fantasy, but branching out into the anime scene, with games such as Blocks Fruits, with it gathering 30 billion visits, putting in the top 3 games on the platform, with it consistently getting around 400,000 concurrent players on at once. Loading into the game, it is quite expansive, as there are a lot of islands scattered around with you having to travel on a boat often, just like in the show, with it themed around pirates, boats and exploration, and also fighting. But just like in the show, pirates also have bounties acquired from killing enemies in the game or even players. One thing I did notice about this game, for it being one of the most popular games on the platform, it did look very basic in terms of its design, but that isn't actually a bad thing, as having more detail in the game can make it not run as smooth on a low end system, so doing this everyone can have the exact same experience no matter what hardware they are on. But just like the previous RPGs mentioned, it is still true to its roots, with quests to earn more gold and XP to then level up faster so then you can put more points into your attribute stats to make yourself more stronger. But then there's also weapon mastery, as once you reach a certain level with your weapon, you can unlock a second ability, which encourages people to try and max out that weapon instead of switching weapons every 2 seconds. The main part of this game are these fruits that you can acquire, that are like abilities with them all doing different things with cool visual effects. Which comes hand in hand with PvP in this game, which I'll be honest with you, that's something I'm not good at, and seeing videos like this, yeah I don't stand a chance at all. 
That isn't to say most Blocks Fruit videos are like this, as it's like a general mix of content reviewing each update, guides on new items in the game, and stuff just overall related to the game in any different way, to help promote the game and make it as big as it possibly can be across the platform. Lastly, you have full blown RPGs like Deep Woken that also released in 2018 costing 400 robux and sometimes 200 if it's on sale. Even with its steep price, there is roughly 20,000 concurrent plays on at once. This game really does feel like a full blown RPG, almost like it's Dark Souls but on Roblox, as it's really hard with a steep learning curve to master in terms of how the combat system works, locking you into like a death state if you're not too careful. If you happen to die a few times in this game, you don't just respawn over and over, you end up in the afterlife, where you meet yourself as they slowly wither away, symbolising the end of that character's journey, which was short lived in my playthrough. As I ended up rushing to make a boat to then travel to the destination, marked on the left side of my screen, to then get murdered by a bunch of inhabitants on an island until I was sent into the deep abyss where I also got murdered again. One thing I can safely say about this game is the world building looks fantastic, as well as the sound design, it really helps build a strong atmosphere around where you stand to make it feel like you're in this fantasy world, as well as not to mention all the dialogue the NPCs have, giving the game a lot of lore. If you're interested in this game, please check out these two videos, as they do a great job of making the learning curve easier also telling you if they think the game is worth it, as it is a paid access game, unlike the other ones on this list. Or you can also check out my friend Super, who does playthroughs and showcases of items on Deep Woken. RPGs will remain as one of the top genres on the platform, with its simple roots to now a full fleshed genre of dungeon crawling to more of a traditional style of exploring areas around a map to kill bosses and different enemies you encounter. Also, you may have seen in this video, I have been wearing a helmet in red and blue that matches the attire of classic RPGs. When this video is up, the blue helmet will be available to purchase for a limited time, so be sure to check it out. As well as if you wish to support more items I create, then check out the as I do put a lot of time into creating hats, and who knows, you might find an item you like in that group as well. Major thank you to Archive for helping me with this video, please check out their Roblox group and Discord server if you're into old Roblox games that have been archived. Thank you for watching this video, if you liked it then feel free to leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see another video like this then leave a comment on what topic you would like to see next. Check out my Discord server as we're trying to build a community over there as well as check out my join page if you wish to support the content I make. And with that being said, I'll see you some other time.